This is a podcast from the Queen City Podcast Network. Welcome to Nerd School. Nerd, nerd, nerd. Yeah. Suck it, nerd. Nerd, nerd, nerd. Uh. Welcome to Nerd School. I was well behaved with my budget because what I tend to do is I wait until after Christmas to buy a new inflatable or any outdoor decoration. I'll buy it like yeah, after. That's so I like keep my eyes out because I have so a few outdoors that are not inflatable. They're just wired shapes. So like I have a wired deer and I have a, a pig who flies. Um, and so I buy those. <laughs> I like watch them and go, okay, Target or Walmart, I'll see you after Christmas and I'll yeah. add a new one to the collection. So then but the next I year, did not. it's all new I did this year. I was trying, I'm trying to travel more in 2023, which means I have to be, um, not buying out Target and Walmart inflatable stock. <laughs> yeah. Traveling costs money. Yep. Listen, she's trying to be international this year. If anyone wants to sponsor TVJ and her international dreams call me give her a call everybody <laughs> and you can reach her at one nine hundred nine zero nine through the galaxy yeah. i'm trying to hop through the galaxy like they did yeah you should and speaking of hopping through the galaxy that's right what uh, uh star lord was doing at this point in the movie where we left off guardians of the galaxy yep. part two where we left off this is part two of galaxy guardians of the galaxy volume two uh, of nerd school podcast is the second uh i'm not sure how the math works out on that this is like two squared this is the yeah. second podcast we've done <laughs> on this film and i can't get enough of the guardians of the galaxy the more i think about it the more i just want to watch guardians of the galaxy movies which i'm glad that volume three is coming out but i had a a bar conversation recently with somebody about marvel movies in general and these guys were saying yeah marvel's jump the shark it's too much there's too many of them they're all the same they're they're not what? good anymore and a lot of people were saying that and i was like whoa, whoa, well, they're, whoa, st- whoa. they're starting to cut down like we're not like this phase was really long right and like it, it just ended but then it's still it's like like even with their shows like they were pounding us with shows and like now we get what in a couple of weeks uh ant-man the new one come out then yeah. I don't think anything else comes out until like May, I believe. But so but like everything's a, getting spread out further. It is, but it's also weird. It's a weird comment because like who else is coming out with movies like that right now? Right. right. Like there's no jump the shark. These these characters all exist. All of them are characters that have mm-hmm. existed for a long time. No one ever yeah. looked at the comic book franchise and goes, Oh, another comic book series. Oh no. <laughs> like yeah. So to say that about movies is a weird thing. And Joe, I'm going to take a wild guess. Um, What what flavor of human were these people? What flavor? So I'm trying, I'm actually trying to remember where I was when I heard, I think it was, I'm assuming it was at a bar. Because so, I'm gonna guess my white guys, male huh? and pale. They're male, room. white guy, probably. Well, yes. Pale. Now I'm gonna say <laughs> that male. their complaints like are not about brand? the actual pale amount of movies because I've heard this rhetoric. It has to do yeah. with what they are terming woke Marvel, and I'm quoting guys because no, people think, don't know how to handle characters actually, who are I, not white and in the lead. Yeah, no, actually, I think the complaint was i'm trying to remember i'm I'm trying to place where i was hearing this but because it was a lot of negativity lately about it not only just that there's a lot but just that america maybe it was on tv maybe i was just listening to tv maybe i wasn't talking but i was like talking to the tv but <laughs> there was a couple of, no so that one like I'm, I'm mixing a bunch of things one has been a conversation at a bar and it's just like hey wait but yeah but but the but i like it when they do guardians of the galaxy because at least that's different it's not just superman batman or whatever it's you know and I just know, I just know named DC movie. It's not like, you know, superheroes with capes, but it's like, it's kind of like Star Wars. I was trying to like get them into that in the conversation I had. But the other thing, I guess must, maybe it was on TV, maybe it was during New Year's, people <laughs> complaining about just that all we are in America, we don't make art anymore. All we make is Marvel movies. Like there's no artistic, the, there's no like 
new movies. There's there's no more good art. It was uh yeah. Well, every, it was, have it you was seen everything it. everywhere all at once? I think it's called. Oh, yeah. that badassness. Yeah, that's that's yeah. that's. I think that's. But all yeah, of that, that probably was good. I didn't see that. If yeah. if you pay attention to any docket, you know. I dare people, one of the things I try and do every year when award seasons come around, I try and watch everything nominated, right? Because I might not make it on my own so that I know who I'm rooting for yeah. um, besides everybody Black. So I take time to watch shows oh. that I wouldn't normally watch Sorry. because Sorry. of that. But I don't yeah. think people are making that effort. You have to leave your house yeah. to go watch these things. And yes, your advertising is going to show you the big blockbuster things because that's what marketing does. That's what these companies are going to do. They're going to market their film. But there are plenty of nuanced new shows, creative shows, weird, funky shows. Like I was just deep diving on what's that show with the old James Bond where he was murdering people at a restaurant. Um, was it the guest list? Something like that. Yeah, there is a lot that I don't even there know. Are, like, there I don't are know a lot of these about. movies. Is the Glass the Onion. Like, there's so much Onion, out yeah. there. Yeah, I don't but even know you what have that is. to, it's not going to come to your front door. You have to, Craig. you have to opt to consume it. So yeah, I don't have to find people, it. Yeah. When people complain about that stuff, I'm like, are you opting to consume those different things? Or are you looking for it? Yeah, you're right. Are they trying hard enough to look? Or are they you don't just, have to try oh. hard enough. Listen, turn on Netflix. <laughs> Netflix is everywhere. They're releasing yeah. new things. Any of these streaming services is releasing a new movie on a constant rotation with hella good class. The Glass Onion itself. Look at the class list, the cast list for Glass Onion. That is a phenomenal cast list. And it's quirky and it's a mystery and it's and, fun. Like, and but they had to add uh Glass Onion, a knives out movie. Yes, to, to, to get try to make to it feel like a, but a franchise. Lot of people probably didn't even that's see the, knives out. That's oh, that's yeah. the issue like i had is. a friend who just told me they watched glass onion and they were lost i like did you see the first one they're like no but it was like to them it was just like oh this is a movie that's on netflix glass onion i'm gonna watch it so you have some people who do watch who, who do consume media like that but then there's also the ones who like like tbj was saying like like i'm sure there's a shit ton of people like oh avatar they ran to right. see avatar before the they avatar, go see yeah. some any small I don't want to say small movie, but any movie that that wasn't heavily budgeted, you know, like I've already heard people talking about the third Avatar movie. Like, I'm like the second one just came on. Sure, he shot him, but and he, I guess he, the third one comes he, out this year. Yeah, he shot them like, both at the same time, yeah. and it's there, there's a lot going into this discussion. There's a lot of it that like Phase Four of Marvel was a little uh, haphazard, and like like there wasn't like. A very obvious story building or anything it's like we're introducing a shit ton of characters and then we're going to bring them together in phase five and six there's also um whiny men kind of being like eh, she hulk wasn't for me because it's a female perspective that kind of i shit. love she hulk yeah i mean um, i haven't finished was, it yet yeah. but but i, I was real quick what's glass on? somebody tell me real quick what is glass have on you ever a seen sequel knives to out? knives out I haven't, but Knives Out is like uh, it's, a murder mystery, right? Show or something? Yeah. It's supposed to be really and, funny. And the like only comedy. character, yeah, it's like a comedy murder mystery from the guy who directed uh, Star Wars The Last Jedi, who is, which is one of the most controversial Star Wars films because a lot of nerds hate it because it tried to do different shit and then it didn't land very well. But uh, but stress. the Knives Out, wasn't it famous before having like a lot, of, like a ton of celebrities in it? The yeah. Well, it had, it's the same, same thing. Glass Iron, the same thing? It's and it's just, a, I mean, it's not a, the same thing, but a, another. It's, it's another happened. mystery. The same detective. Yeah. The only carryover is the fact that Daniel Craig's Benoit Blanc is the detective trying to solve the mystery. Did you say all, Benoit, all the characters detective. Are detective. Benoit yeah. Blanc? Yeah. Benoit Blanc. Okay. Benoit Blanc. It's good. Blank. Joe, if you haven't, sat, sit down and watch <sighs> the knives out. I is, like, it, is it nerdy? But don't be drunk. It does have Captain America <laughs> in it. <laughs> it does. It does have yeah. Captain America. But not Captain America, but Chris Evans, right? Chris Evans. Yes. Yeah. Is it but nerdy? I say watch it count it. as a nerd well, show? No. I will, if you like cozy mysteries, but that's his own genre and quirk. of people. And you, and you yeah. like quirky nerds. It's not like superhero <laughs> nerdy, but it yeah. is. If you love mysteries, if you like playing Clue, if you loved just trying to guess who done it. But it could be. It could but show. it's not sci-fi in any way. It's not no. fantasy in any way. So it's it, not it genre. Would, it I mean, it's work. its own genre, but. 
for our yeah. nerdy like when it's we just do a, a break, mystery who does we wouldn't pick it on the summer movie thing you never know we're all open to pick whatever we pick okay right. i didn't know if they had to be nerdy we don't we've never had limitations on our summer picks we've all just we just them. happened to all be I nerdy mean, <laughs> i mean we are all nerds yeah <laughs> no we are all nerds but we've yeah. never said we've just each put in what we would like to see in the summer and some of us yeah. put in dumb movies like barbarella mm-hmm. and yeah, some of us pick great movies <laughs> <laughs> so we've never had any regulations uh, otherwise that movie would not have you know what it. i want you know what i want i want a gruff and loud watch through uh barbarella oh, i believe that would be awesome. <laughs> he, he would do that i mean gruff is the whole reason i picked barbarella because he was he references yeah, it so just every you day him doing that would be awesome he's a big barbarella uh, the flash barbarella like he's into all that kind of old i don't know if he's into it but he's just seen it all when he was a kid he grew up on that stuff like anyway yeah, anyway yeah like i good think plug for the gruff and loud show but let's get back into the movie or let andy right. finish his thought well i i just wanted to sort of talk about like the the idea that Marvel jumped the shark. On one hand, it's possible. There is a lot of goddamn Marvel shit out there. Yeah. And maybe people are losing interest because it's not as focused as it was. And there were a couple of things in phase four, like Doctor Strange 2 didn't like had impossible expectations. Yeah. And I think it 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 disappointed some folks with how they handled certain things in there. But we'll get to that when we talk to Doctor Strange 2. Uh it's been a lot of like series here and there. It's not been focused. It's been uh, you know, it, it includes like started at WandaVision, I think, right? And then yeah. every, everything since then has been so all over the place and it's not quite as tightly connected as, you know, phase one, two, three, all that stuff did. Really up I will asterisk you and say that we know of because. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's true. We have not gotten to where it's building to yet. Yeah. But uh, uh, that's, but nerds are impatient. So. Well, for the record, yes. let me just say like, I, I, feel the opposite i kind of wish everything was just a marvel movie from here on out i mean i'm so far behind on best pictures like i'm still on 1950 or where whenever sound of music was 1960 something you're fired Joe. Uh, so i'm still because i'm trying to watch all the good movies you know the but when you, it got you, the you're watching the 60, everything right now you're watching like every uh, saturday night live from the beginning you're watching yes. all of pro wrestling yes. from the the 80s to the 90s i have an obsession uh, with chronology leave me alone but <laughs> anyway, that's your problem. Oh, you're like but, a chronomicon from Marvel's Age of the I'm trying field. to consume everything, but my favorites are the Mar- like the Marvel shit's just fun as hell. Like I still love it all. Like I'm not sick yeah. of it all, but I also haven't seen everything you guys and most of people have seen. Like everybody else yeah. has seen phase four and five. You know, I'm still on phase what are we on? Phase three, three right here. We're so in three. We're we're I, I, flipping I, I, along, I feel, but yeah. I'm the still... other thing I think uh the other complaint is that everything has kind of started to have to be sci-fi or fantasy everything has kind of had to appeal to like it like you couldn't tell you just made a good good point about you know them naming that glass onion as a franchise to kind of fit in that the the director was pissed about it was a podcast it was a podcast that's what I i was listening to um uh i think it was um uh the one with uh sean hayes and uh Will Arnett and uh, uh yeah, um, 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 Jason um, Bateman, um, um, Smartless, Smartless, yeah. And they were interviewing. Well, they're going to be somebody. pissed because they're not in those movies. They're not in the Marvel universe. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. But there's also you can. I mean, they could be uh, at some point, but I think it's also the fact that you like it's hard to make different like classic, you know, love stories. It, it's yeah. hard to do like you know, uh, the like tense dramas that are like sort of small scale like yeah that that fucking movie i don't know why this is the one that's in my head uh i think it was like nick nolte and sissy spacek and no uh it was that thing in the bedroom where it was just like a story of an old couple and a a really tense family situation but i think we have some of those because i think about what two years ago the one where um it's just like there's plenty What's of her shit name was out dominated, there. nominated for, and it takes place in a hotel room. It was just last year. What? Who is I, it? I, is I, it? I don't remember. It's 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 there's, there's 400, there's 400 about the streamers. Jim, John David Washington and... Uh, uh, no, but that's Diana another Diana. one. Okay. So these small... This is... Um, I think it's just Emma, like the Emma Robinson was playing this one where she hires a male sex worker 
Um, and we're working through her life as an older woman. And it all takes place like in this mm-hmm. hotel room and it's very intense yeah. and done. Right. But I think what Andy is saying, everything has been turned into franchises, but I think that's and- like, blame studio systems and yeah like, studio systems and the streamers yeah. that need attention for everything i i, I get why yeah. it's happened and i get the complaint is that it's there's so much content out there you can make all those kind of movies you want you're just not going to get an audience for it but unless you people know how happen to turn upon it them. around what people have to do to turn it around because i hear this complaint about black leads and we are seeing a resurgence of it you have to put your money where your mouth is mm-hmm you have to go seek out and find the stuff that you you were complaining because about. Because then that sends a message to them. Oh, yeah. People are, do you know how I many? Yeah, the, the complainers films? need to spend their money in the right place. Do you know how many black films complain. were told that they cannot be successful because we cannot tout a show predominantly black and make it well? And then people have to go, oh, I'll show you. This is where yeah. my money's going. Well, that goes back but, to Black Panther when it came out. Like you said, like everybody in their family went to see that. You know, it's like, everybody came out to support black people starring in their own action thing to like yeah say, hey, even when they what? don't know We're what's gonna... happening yeah, you, even you they didn't put... know what it was yeah i mean yeah. but you put your money where your yeah. mouth is and i say yeah. that like not just in movie world but that's uh, i live in a world of edi sometimes and a lot of people complain and the best way to fight if you hate what walmart and target is doing what you're doing with your paycheck I, Tiffany, each paycheck buys something from a Black-owned business and a woman-owned business. What are you doing? You can't just complain without action. Same thing goes in the film industry. The the studios aren't going to make a change until audiences trend Demand it, yeah. And the best way to do that is with your money. They don't care if you're, you have a podcast, that's what we are, or Twitter <laughs> or Twitch, and you say these things. They don't care about our podcast. They should. Marvel should yeah. totally care about our podcast. But money talks. My but you, you know, I this on the same subject, I don't think we are too far away from a Marvel movie that could be a best picture. I mean, the actors they have in these Marvel movies do good move they, they do great movies. Like they're mm-hmm. they're nominated in things, right? Like Mark Ruffalo is a good actor. Uh um, he's a hell of an actor. Uh Scarjo is a great actress, right? She's probably one, I don't know what she's one, but I think she's a really good actress. It it's not like wonder. they're just getting bubblegum wrestlers like they used to. I don't know. I mean, like, wrestlers. like, like Lord of the Rings won, like the third one, won mm-hmm. Best Picture, and it kind of felt like it was saying, "All right, we love this trilogy so much that we're gonna give the third one." All right, mm-hmm. fine, we'll give you the the Best Picture Oscar. We've nominated each time, and I wonder, like, that's a like a huge achievement for a fantasy film, but it's also based on you know classic literature, and I'm wondering if that's that's is that the, the separation? Will people not give a comic book a, I guess, validity? And I think to... I think the Dark Knight, you know, uh, Heath Ledger won an Oscar for the Dark Knight as the Joker. He did. He did. And I think mm-hmm. the Dark Knight yeah. might have even been nominated for Best Picture. I'm not sure. It was a good. Show. I don't remember. Yeah, like I Batman. Think. I can see that. Yeah. So I guess. Maybe. No, I think well, you have to pay attention to who votes in the Academy, right? and uh, what they're put in front of. And studios do have a hand in who they nominate or put forth for certain mm-hmm. awards. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's it's possible. Listen, Angela Bassett is a beast. They're way behind in giving her a thousand awards, okay? Uh-huh. Yeah. That woman, every time she has hit the screen, she's played, a, she's played multiple major women in history and we just look at her um, and don't give her her flowers. So <laughs> listen, there is room for the mcu do you guys think as because our i'm assuming you're kind of saying that the the people who vote which i i'm not really sure but it's just like an old white guy academy right historically have you never heard of that oscar so white (laughs) protest yeah Yeah, i remember that something but is it better not like have they done anything about that a year later it was better and then it went back to predominantly but like a lot of these awards shows like right now i guess i was watching um gerard carmichael on Jimmy Fallon the other night. He was talking about how like they didn't have the Golden Globes last year because you know black people like were like I, I don't know if, if they were nominated or they weren't included in the process. Yeah. And like this year they have him hosting the Golden Globes. Like he wanted Stone Cold Steve Austin 
to like be in his open and bit or whatever. Uh-huh. Like I think Stone Cold's dad died or something. So he didn't get a chance to do it. But like they wanted him to do all of these things. But then he was like sitting there saying like about how like a lot of people in our community don't really support award shows and things like that because they're quote unquote not for us kind of thing. Because so like, like everything that he was trying to do, yeah, everything he was trying to do, he said they kept shooting down. But then it was like when he said, Well, I'm not going to do it. When he threatened not to do it, they're like, okay, we're mu- we're missing out on having like Gerard Carmichael because he came out like that just elevated him to like the forefront of like I guess young Black America, which is an audience that they're trying to capture. So for him to like not do something or say threaten to not do something, so white America can sit there and say, hey. We got this young black guy who had this special. He came out. He's living in his truth. It's it's like one of those things where it's like you see award systems trying to grow, you know. But it, but the Golden Girl Globes is a like famously the Golden Girl Globes. The Golden Girl Globes. <laughs> That's what that should be. The Golden Girl Globes. Yeah, like, everyone that, gets a B Arthur statue. Everybody gets a B Arthur head. Yeah. But yeah, the Golden Globes are like sort of famously. Uh, the Hollywood Foreign Press is what puts yeah. on the Golden Globes, and they're sort of famously a like sort of corrupt and don't give a shit, yep. and uh, it's weird because I mean I'm surprised that they're shooting down anything because they would always put like Ricky Gervais up there as the host, and he just they just let him destroy rip into everybody, yeah, and that like was the gimmick for a while for the just tear the shit out of the Hollywood uh, surface. I think uh, Tina Fey and Amy Poehler did the same shit with just like, they did wrapping on everybody, and that was that was that's famously like the award show where you go get hammered and yeah just have that kind of <laughs> right. yeah no one really cares because the Golden Globes are just everything right it's TV well, movies yes whatever. but also historically statistically with a few exceptions the top wins at the Golden Globe tend to be the top wins at the Oscars yeah the Golden oh, Globes really? kind of like are they're like a the good beginning. predictor. It's mm-hmm. like, a, oh. oh, by the way, here Golden Globes are like, here is the stuff you should be paying attention to, yeah. Academy. And then the Academy, like, whoa. Oh. And like, I think ooh. only the only time, was it the year that Jamie Foxx was upset? Like, he had been winning everything. Was it Jamie Foxx or Denzel? One of them had been winning every award, including the Golden, but got to the Oscars and did not win. And that was, like, uh-huh. the first time I in a long say, time. I think, maybe it's Denzel. I think it was- that sounds like Denzel. it's one of those two. Uh, yeah, I, I, it, I feel like it sounds more like a Jamie Foxx thing. Like to get it's pissed. one of those two that he had gone through the whole season just killing it in Best Actor, killing, and it was you know Jamie Foxx is actually a very talented actor, right? Yeah, you yeah. just forget it sometimes because he's funny. We forget that he also is the same yeah. man did Ray Charles, right? Yeah, yeah. But it was, I think it's like a ninety something percent rate that the top winners, Best Picture, Best Actress, Best Actor, tend to be the same in both not on purpose that's just how it rolls out so you can kind of predict but there is the occasional upset that changes on oscar night yeah which is why all that to say is yes joe eventually (laughs) (laughs) when those old people die young nerdy people are gonna take over could be but the storyline has to have and the reason i mentioned angela bassett because in order to get it the storyline has to take you high and take you low yeah that actor who tends to get a nod tends to have written an emotional roller coaster to get the nod. Well, right. I, I remember being and really it's... emotionally moved uh, by Black Panther when his dad died, and it was like, um, yeah, like a choke. Well, that's up why I mentioned there. that like, movie in particular because yeah, yeah. that gives us space to see that, right? And we see it in the last one. We're not talking sure. about that yet, but we see we see emotions happen. We yeah. don't get it always in the other Marvel movies. Sometimes we do. But even the yeah. way, like when we talked about the last Iron Man, even the way Tony Stark was playing his PTSD was not, they didn't go all the way in on it like they like you would for an Oscar win, right? Sure. Um, so, you know, they tend to be lighter for the most part because mm. you, who wants to be heavy at a Marvel movie? Yeah, so true. I think that would be the only trick. Well, I think yeah. when they do Taser Face, that'll be one they can really like <laughs> go <laughs> deep on Taser, Taser face. face the movie and have him be Same emotional. True. Uh but okay, while Rocket and Groot remain behind to repair the ship and guard Nebula and right, right. Ego ship is filled with uh 
Mantis. Mantis, Mantis and Drax <laughs> getting to know each other and the whole antenna bit. They have a little side bet. Uh, Star Lord and Drax have a bet about what her antennas do. Uh, <laughs> so it gives her a chance to tell us about her empath empathic abilities. Uh, and then the whole develop the whole quill love for Gamora, sexual feelings. You have sexual feelings for her. No, 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 no. <laughs> That's embarrassing. You're so embarrassing. <laughs> yeah. If you go, ha, 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 ha. Yeah, yeah, and then she's learning to laugh at practical jokes. Anyway, she has the ability to put people to sleep, which might come in handy later as we kind of figure. Mm. She's like, oh, I can put people. He helps me put them to sleep kind of thing just by whatever touching them. And then so we kind of make note of that for some possible foreshadowing. And then the Ravage, meanwhile, the Ravagers find Rocket, and he has some fun. And there's a fun scene with him effing with all the Ravagers with yeah. all of his tech, uh, you know, blowing them up and i just saw the those guys blowing up in the in the woods like <laughs> <"Whoa."> <laughs> yeah. that's pretty cool that was fun mm. until yandu catches him with his arrow and he's like oh boy yep uh and they capture rocket but when yandu hesitates to turn over quill whom he raised his lieutenant craglin albfon terry who went to prom with my wife uh questions his objectivity <laughs> And another lieutenant, Taserface, leads a mutiny with help from Nebula. <laughs> Taserface. And Nebula helps and sh while she realizes that the Yarrow root isn't ripe, that she's been trying to eat the whole time. Yeah. And she finally gets a hold of it. Oh, it, it's not ripe. Uh, and that was like one of like the such a, a throwaway gag, but it's mm -hmm, like something like th th they built up just that gag yeah. like four times. <laughs> yeah. And just they're brilliant. I love the little shit like that. That's why I love this movie. Yeah. That's like the same thing with uh Drax's sensitive nipples yeah. coming into play <laughs> at the end. <laughs> it's like you almost forgot that was even a line. And right then... the very beginning when they were <laughs> doing so. I have sensitive yeah. nipples. Oh my nipples. <laughs> uh and I have very sensitive nipples too, if I haven't mentioned that. Uh <laughs> I'm sure but... the listeners really needed to know that. <laughs> they want to know. Ego is a godlike celestial that manipulated the matter around its consciousness to form his home planet. Explains that he projected a humanoid guise to travel the universe and discover a purpose, eventually falling in love with Quill's mother, Meredith. And then we get the little penis bit about Quill's mom and Drax's parents. Uh, that's a little Kurt funny Russell's bit. dog. He's like, my parents <laughs> always talk about consummate, you know, <laughs> having sex. Oh, that's gross. Listen, Drax is my favorite. Yeah, he's great. Yeah. He's... So, and I've, I've heard some buzz about Drax, like he's being replaced. Uh, well, Drax, uh, well, it's, it depends. Uh, we don't know how Guardians 3 is going to shake out exactly, but uh -huh. uh, it's generally projected as the last of the trilogy of these, this form of the Guardians of the Galaxy. Okay. So, we don't know which characters are going to remain. Or maybe some will lose some characters. The the trailers for Guardians Three have, have looked like it's really going to lean into some really uh, emotional eras, especially with dealing with Rocket's origin and uh, like. But supposedly know, Drax gets killed. It's like possible. There's, the, there's actually a thing where they like on a uh, new Rockstar does a breakdown of like how. Um, Drax could possibly get killed, but then you know, like there's Bart a million ways he could get killed. Yeah. But Batista's Jerry been Bart mouthing off about being yeah. done with being Drax. Yeah. It's like saying, like I love Drax, he, I'm grateful for him, but I was I was getting worn out by that the makeup process, and yeah, I, I kind of don't them. want that silliness to be my entire legacy. But that's like a big wrestler dude who's who is in Glass Onion, by the way. Batista, he is that. really, yeah. Mm -hmm. But like huh. he's that's a guy trying to also. Uh, Make himself into a uh, he doesn't want to get marketable stuck. commodity. Yeah, he, he doesn't. Yeah, I mean, there's going to be a limited amount of roles for a giant muscled man like that. Yeah, so right. He's but he's I think what original. he has. I mean, there's a debate recently on like the best WWE wrestler to move into acting, and oh, it was Hulk Hogan with Santa with muscles. That was the greatest <laughs> achievement in the history of wrestling <laughs> acting is Hulk Hogan, Santa with muscles. You know, so what about that one John Cena did not too long ago where he was uh, babysitting? What's the name of that? Day no, wait, movie? wait. I'm mistaken. It's uh, Jesse Ventura's wordless role in Demolition oh, Man. Lord. 
No, you're, I you're think Batista about- has it though, because <laughs> The Rock, well, I appreciate The Rock. The Rock has done a phenomenal job of transitioning and, and being on top of it. But character wise, like playing characters, I think give him a couple of movies where he's not Drax. And even including his time in, in Glass Onions, he has good timing comedically, but he also can dive deep. And I think he deep he dive. has <laughs> he can deep dive. So yeah, I think saying. like there there was one some uh, a friend of mine on Twitter had a thing where he was talking about uh, the Rock as Black Adam, which uh, did his he was trying to make that movie for fifteen years and it didn't do very well <coughs> and and like the guy said, uh, Black Adam is where we take everything the Rock is good at and aggressively not do those things. <laughs> it's like <laughs> it's everything that made the rock a successful character and movie star it's the, the everything that made people like the rock let's just take all that out because that's not what black adam as a character is in general uh i haven't seen black adam yet so i don't i can't speak to the specifics on that but it was just like black adam as a character is very you know powerful super villain ruler of a country kind of things kind of it's like sort of like a dr doom namor mix thing uh with Which, Super, superman's magic power magic like power i've powers. seen it and to me um what's the what's the what's what's shazam's real name doctors was it so we'll give uh, it south and s dr savannah yeah so mark strong it's one of those things where it's like if they could have gotten someone else to play that part like mark strong who was i even though the movie was shitty I think was a good Sinestro. Mark Strong probably could have been a good Black Adam. Like he has, he he had that that sort of evil edge to me, right? Well, the the I, thing, yeah, uh, Mark Strong. When is, I say he's good at being a villain, but but the and uh, villain slash anti hero, so he had he can do that. Like the Rock, like Black Adam. It's one of those things where it's like how Ryan Reynolds took forever to do Deadpool. He wanted, he really wanted to do Deadpool because that's Ryan Reynolds. That's a shtick. If the Rock is Black Adam, to me, it's just like like a nerd liking it. Like, let's say, that'd be like me sitting there saying, you know what? I want to be Black Superman so bad. This, this a- is the thing with, with, yeah, that's probably part of it, but probably what he built it into. But mm-hmm. I've, this is like 15 years ago. So this is the early 2000s. I remember because I was following nerd media at the time. It was kind of my job. Uh, he put out, like, this was, you know, pre-Twitter even. There was, like, he sort of put out a press release. And was it, like, like, at, it was like there? a fan oh. poll on, like, <laughs> like the like Yahoo fan poll or something, or a <laughs> Google fan, something like that, where, like, he was, like, the rumor was he was in talks to mm-hmm. be uh, in, you know, some comic book character. This is before the MCU. I remember this specifically because like, who should I play? The Rock, like there right. was rumors that The Rock was going to do something like that. Who should I play in the DC universe, Shazam or Black Adam? And Black Adam won. And in my brain, knowing what nerds are like, the only reason Black Adam won is because of the color of his skin and the color of that Black Adam is supposed to be. Nerd Nerds at that time would not, really? The Rock would have been like, what his talent is would have been much better as uh, Shazam. He would be in that whole thing, like Zach Levi in the Shazam movie, mm-hmm. doing that. The Rock would be great at doing that because he'd be fun. He'd be silly. Like Jumanji is is half that, yes. where he's he's right. there's a little boy and The Rock is pretending to be a little guy with yep. more power. That because is in, he's very funny. Yeah, right. Yeah, he is great in that. <laughs> but I knew it's like I. Uh, I still remember going, oh, the only reason these nerds are voting for Black Adam is because you look like uh, more like you should be you'd be like in the Middle Eastern area. That's the I only love that reason. you said back then nerds behave that way. And yeah. yeah. Not back then. <laughs> it's, right. it's, it's now that up, now the racism is cured. Since then. <laughs> since <laughs> then Obama yeah. fixed racism. No, no. I mean, I'm, I'm they're a little saying... quieter about it, but it's still very <laughs> much. There are more yeah. people willing to accept uh, yes. Cross racial casting than there were back in 2004 or so. Are they? <laughs> there are more. They're not enough, but there no. are more. There are more. Santa Claus was a black man. 
Yeah, there's an I onyx. mean, in my house, there's an onyx. Blanta. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Blanta. That's my, one of my oh, my Blanta. It's Blanta. Blanta. I love it. Blanta. Uh, okay, so Taser Face imprisons Rocket and Yondu aboard the latter ship and because, ex- executes his <laughs> what's that? And executes because his because Craglin, uh, yeah, Craglin accidentally did a mutiny. Yeah, like, yeah. I, didn't, yeah. I, I didn't mean to do a mutiny. I didn't mean to do, yeah. Uh, and then they, they, we see him execute his loyalists by releasing them into the vacuum of space. And there's one of my favorite guys is Tolk. Tommy Flanagan plays him. Uh, yeah, he's, he's the guy awesome from. Dude. I love him from uh, Sons of Anarchy. He's one of my what? favorite he's, characters. That's isn't that John Lovitz? That's the ticket guy. Ta- that's Tommy Flanagan. This is Tommy Flanagan. He's oh, okay. also Tommy pretty Flanagan. good in, in this show called. Uh, in, in 50 He's a Scottish World. guy. Yeah, he played the mobster on this show called uh, what is this? I think it's called Fuck Off. Well, whatever it is, it's like book four <laughs> of the Power Universe. He's like an Irish mobster. He's oh yeah, I yeah, I hadn't seen him in anything other than Sons of Anarchy, and I thought he was great. In that. He's been in a lot of things. Yeah, that guy's great. Anyway, so Tolk. And I had to look up Tolk if that's a character. And of course, it's a character in comics, T U L L K. Andy, what's the backstory on that guy? Uh, I <laughs> honestly don't know. Oh, <laughs> boom, I stumped the professor. Wow, Andy, you're supposed to be like, uh, I'll give you more on that later. You're not supposed to admit to Joe you don't know. Boom. Well, uh, I, I don't re- recall his name being mentioned in the film. So that's one of the, f- like, there were a lot of characters I needed to look up for this movie. <laughs> and I did let you know the sovereign people were made up. For, hey, you didn't know that. Uh, so Tulk is T U L L K. I don't know. I just looked him up because I wondered if if it's Tommy Flanagan. Is he a real character? And is he like a lawyer? Is it is there a storyline in the comics like this where he's loyal to uh, Yondu or whatever? So I didn't really do a lot of research, but I figured you just. I didn't know. I never know if these guys are well-known comic book things that you guys have read about for years or if they're just like a one-off thing so that's i just wrote that down but uh, he's a galactic bounty hunter and mercenary who accepted jobs from anyone in, in the galaxy including ronan the accuser that's who tulk is in the comics but he doesn't have his own comic like the incredible tulk no, <laughs> <laughs> no. i think he's probably I, I don't see a lot uh, based on his actual Marvel comic stuff, so I'm guessing, much like this version of Yondu, he might have been introduced after these movies started coming out in the comics. Just like like well, then, that way. we get the whole funny Taser face scrotum hat thing. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's metaphorical. It's my, Taser face. Your name is Taser face. Might as well be scrotum hat. <laughs> yeah. metaphor I call it. No, wait, no. wait 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 do you shoot tasers out of your face <laughs> <laughs> uh, makes sense. yeah but like yeah. like i said uh last time uh apparently the taser face was actually in the comics in the 90s and the guy who uh created him uh said his like five-year-old son came up with a name <laughs> that's funny Aww. i love that i still love that it's cute thing. yeah um Jim Valentino is the creator of Taser. That's the creator. From um, 1990. And Ego, we find out that uh, Ego hired Yondu to collect the young Quill after Meredith's death, but the boy was never delivered, and Ego has been searching for him ever since. Uh, he teaches Quill to manipulate the celestial power uh, on that whole little thing where he creates the ball and he gets mm-hmm. to play ball with his dad, which is you know what he's always wanted to do and every that's a metaphorical yes <laughs> yeah it's a cliche thing everybody wants to yeah. do that. their dad throw a ball with him i guess but nebula leaves to find and kill gamora whom she blames for the torture inflicted on her by their adoptive father thanos and the, uh, the plan to destroy thanos with every conceivable weapon makes cragley uneasy craglin uh, craglin i don't know why i wrote Cragley. Oh, somebody else wrote this. I'm reading somebody's description on Wikipedia, I think. Uh, yeah, uh, I was thinking like a pretty necklace to make the other girls <laughs> jealous. That's what it says. Like, like Ooh, what, that's what are you nice. gonna do with your winnings? Yeah, yeah. Uh, it, just the way that he, he spot, like she was going through this whole thing, and he was just looking at her and just said, like, oh, it was, it was like, yeah, okay, whatever kind of thing. You no, know? he had this like, I don't give a shit, but then also kind of like. Yeah, <laughs> have fun with that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, and that's uh, 
That's uh, James, uh, not James Gunn. Um, Sean Gunn. Sean Gunn, who went to prom with my wife. <laughs> and who I believe actually did the physical uh, stuff for Rocket. Rocket, yeah, we've mentioned that before. Yeah, he was yeah. actually the Rocket guy, I guess. So the physical part, but not yeah. But yeah, and he was also in Gilmore Girls, which my daughter's really into. And I was watching, I was like, hey, you know, mommy knows that guy. She's like, really? Yeah. He did. She, uh, I guess he did. You like yeah. sit in a bar and feel like, you know, my, my wife knows Craglin from my. <laughs> I do. You know, she knows him. I don't think there's a lot of connections with people that are on TV. So I think it's been a weird thing for my kids to grow up. And they, when they were little, they really thought we knew more people than we did just because there would be like a background person that we knew, you know, that, mm-hmm. oh, we know that guy. So they like really thought, like, oh, do you know that guy? Like, do you know Obama? Like, do you know him? Like, no, we don't know. Obama. We don't know any. Everybody. Like, you must know everyone. <laughs> no, we know like seven people that have been on TV. So then now we know everybody. Uh, but they were, when they were little, they didn't get it. Like, they didn't get the difference. Now they kind of get that we're, losers but uh <laughs> then they didn't uh no you're not don cheeto's your best friend so. don cheeto and Jeez. i interacted once he rolled his eyes at me hard and uh, then that started a beautiful friendship yeah we are best buds he's gonna be on the podcast episode 751 look out for that one when we get to it <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh okay nebula uh, okay where are we at uh oh no uh, uh, I think you want to point out before while she's doing this and he's playing ball with his dad that Gamora is like something's off the whole time she knows something's off but no one's listening to her so let's note that Gamora does and knows there's something off yeah and Gamora doesn't trying, trust yeah. Ego so Star-Lord didn't trust yes, Ego at first right. Yeah, right, Gamora right, right. said you should go find this out and then yeah. now Star-Lord is trusting Something's him and weird. then yeah. Gamora's going nah this ain't right and she doesn't yeah. trust Mantis either like what's going no. on her is it Mantis? Is that the right name? Yeah. Manta? yeah. Mantis? Yeah. Ma- Mantis, Mantis starts to try to confess something to Drax and then shuts up. And uh, when Gamora like, shows up, she's like, What were you about to guy. say? So she's uneasy about all of it. It's it was like they got quiet when she came out. Like, yeah. The, 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 the environment, not the environment, the uh, mood the changed. changed. Yeah. yeah. My, yeah. My, my, her vibe, intuition, y'all. she, her, her Gamora intuition. Plus, she's also trying to uh, deny that she has any feelings for her quill of course yeah. i mean there is no unspoken thing uh of course. but it'd be interesting to see a backstory i don't know if it may be in the comics there's a comic i can read that tell us like the backstory of nebula and gamora and their childhood a little like a little more in depth we get more of that. of that we get more of that a little bit more of that in infinity war oh yeah. okay okay uh, G- gamora and nebula play a big part in infinity oh war. really oh cool yeah because yeah. i mean just the thought of that when she explains how you know, every time I would lose to you, Thanos would would replace part of me with uh, metal or robotics or whatever. Just kind of how she's half robot, half human is kind of like that's an interesting concept, I think, for like a mm-hmm. a, a series or a something. You know, like right, take childhood even, trauma. Even just one of those things where it's like not a series, but like a comic book series. Like it'd be interesting to read. I don't know. It's like you see, might be with, depressed after you read. With that exchange, you <laughs> yeah. see how it's like, essentially child abuse, Joe. How it's Gamora, awful, but it's crazy. Yeah. Sorry, go ahead, Art. Sorry. <laughs> like how Gamora, she is like she has like that warrior mentality. So it's like she always wants to win. With like Nebula, who who comes off harder than Gamora is. You know, she was she basically sitting there saying like all she really wanted was like a sister. Like she has so much hatred. In her for Gamora, not because she wanted to best her or beat her and all of this. She just wanted, you know, a sister. It was a familiar thing for her. Yeah, she wanted Gamora, someone to back up, yeah. back her up from being. Yeah, whereas, whereas Gamora, it was just like pound, 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 pound. Huh, I got to win. I got, and that's also because I guess it's the way Gamora. It's also was survival. Raised. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's survival. As, 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 yeah. As you figure out stories in an abusive home, sometimes some kids have to figure out how to survive and it's not pretty and it's not cute. And it does, yeah. it tears up a generation of children. So it would be an interesting watch, but like a faux documentary. So we could actually feel our feels when we watched it, when we go in, like a true crime documentary on Thanos as a parent. Ooh, That's what I yeah. want to see. I mean, we, like, cool. uh, we do get some... We get some. Uh, we get some of that in Infinity War, and but I want a full doc, faux documentary. Somebody there's call some, me. Let's there's write a some kid somewhere 
in some small college, some small liberal arts college, writing a thesis paper on Thanos and fatherhood. And it's probably brilliant. Uh, it probably oh, is. I'm sure there are at least 25 of them in the in circulation now. And I would read them all. I would, uh, the true crimer in me would be like, yes, and this is how you create monsters. And that is uh, mm-hmm. TBJ spinoff podcast where she just reads Marvel <laughs> theses. There you go. <laughs> on top of Two Sisters in True Crime, she also yes. has this. Reading theses while making feces. <laughs> no. Let's, no. Well, aren't we always all making feces unless you're not eating? Not like your body is just you. making feces. Not making that we want to talk not about for now. How do you know my toileting <laughs> schedule? All right. While I'm prison, Rocket and Yandu. Well, can I say this? I want to yeah. say this real quick. Oh, well, I'm, the I'm one of feces. those people. I'm one of those people <laughs> who believes, who, who doesn't believe in taking things into the bathroom with them <laughs> to read like i believe in the, the i believe in fecal atmosphere right so like my phone you don't want to flag it like, like I, i'm not sitting on the flag i'm not sitting on the toilet on my phone i'm not oh sitting on the toilet reading any type of material because yeah I, i'm just that's like that's like that's like sitting on the toilet and eating to me yeah like, um, I, feel like, I feel like if you sit on the toilet scrolling through your phone and he has half of his meals on the toilet (laughs) (laughs) this is a conversation you do not want to have (laughs) i'm just thankful i no longer have to sit there and read the ingredients of shampoo bottles instead well see that's different it's the shampoo bottle is already in the bathroom like if you had but some people put magazine rats in their bathroom that's That's true but here's the thing here's the thing Let's say, for instance, Uncle John's bathroom <laughs> reader is a let's say, for yeah. instance, series of a, books. You have designed. a roommate or your husband, your wife, whoever, right? Takes in the morning newspaper into the bathroom, <laughs> sitting there reading the paper, <laughs> licking their finger, turning the Hopefully page. Hopefully, they can like, turn without licking their finger, but go for it. it. <laughs> That's just whatever. But they're sitting there reading the newspaper, right? They get finished. Oh, I'm finished with the newspaper. Sit the newspaper on the sink, finish doing whatever they been, they've been in all of that stuff. They wash their hands. They did wash their hands. They come out the bathroom and they bring out the newspaper. Do you want to touch that newspaper? Not me. Not me. Uh, honestly, if that's your partner, you've touched plenty of their fecal matter in some form it, or another. What, what, is, is, is Wait a minute. What are you doing, TBJ? Your is butt is on the man. same toilet that their it butt is, is the on thing. to use the it bathroom. The thing, no. that's, that's un, it's, 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 I don't want to say it's unknowingly, but it's, it's one of those things where it's like, oh, oh it's like I got to breathe the same air as you, right? But, well, but most people gonna... keep their bathroom reading. Like I think about my dad, he has a thing of like a few magazines that he reads in the bathroom. They yeah, stay already, in there. They're already if he's in there. Read this month's but, Ebony. But they'll like, go back and read like, the next. It's like article. double dipping. It's like double dipping. It. It's like double dipping the chip. Like you, put, like the fresh newspaper went in the bathroom with you. Now you're coming back out. That newspaper ain't fresh no more. Cause it got fecal atmosphere all up, all up in it. Oh, I, I can guess what Andy's thinking right now is <laughs> the funny paper when we were kids. My dad was known <laughs> to tag the newspaper. You described what my dad would do every Sunday morning. We love. We couldn't wait for the Sunday comics, but they all smelled like my dad's ass. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> all right, and moving on. This is about guiding the gag to volume. Moving two. on, everybody's yes. on their way. Ego now. I have famously huge turds. Yes. But while imprisoned, Rocket and Yandu bond, and Groot is too adorable to kill. Uh, the torture part is aggravating when they torture little baby Groot. That's the hardest part, I think, for no guy. But the bit where they're trying to get him to free them, uh, Rocket and Yandu is hilarious and fun. He keeps bringing them. Where they're trying thing. to get him to go to the drawer, and he's like, <laughs> yeah. and they're like, no. that's my underwear. <laughs> you know, the toe. You know, and and we find out why Groot doesn't like hats. He doesn't like hats. He doesn't like hats. <laughs> Wait, that's why you don't like hats? <laughs> because this is the like, conversation we should be having right now. <laughs> like that whole thing. It's like, whose toe is that? <laughs> Please tell me that toe was already detached when you brought it. <laughs> so if you have like a chest somewhere where you keep a bunch of severed human toes, yeah. then let's that, not speak of this again. 
that whole bit was funny. And I love because that establishes his ineptitude. So when everything is relying on him later to like stop everybody from dying with a bomb, it's like, oh, he didn't, he didn't know what he's doing. He's so like, Rocket says later, treat. listen, honestly, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> What's gonna he, happen? he is the baby part of baby Groot is still there. Yes. It's freaking adorable. Dumber, smaller Groot, as Drax refers to him. Mm -hmm. And then uh, Groot and Kraglin, the latter having never intended to start the mutiny, free Rocket and Yondu, and they use Yondu's arrow to destroy the ship and its crew as they escape. But Taserface warns the Sovereign before dying. Uh, as and the Sovereign laugh at his name, too. Yeah. <laughs> Tell yes. all that, that, that hear about <laughs> this. Who told you? Taserface. And she's sort of laughing at him. Yeah. And he blows up. That's just a funny another bit that they carried on and kept doing you know yeah. one more time on that taser face joke it was great <laughs> uh, and yeah that the scene where the arrows flying all over the place and the rockets just like shooting through walls because he's looking at the cameras where people are and blasting yes that was really cool that was the really show artistic sequence. and well done yeah really yeah. cool mm -hmm. and just like get your kind of excited there's all these but cool little the good things. soundtrack as well like yeah yeah it helps like a good, everything comes together well yeah a good uh well-chosen song really enhances uh an action scene yeah I guess sure. we watch uh what's the movie with um the current the king's the king's men the one where they have uh the dude from the the colin, colin firth colin firth and like free bird is playing Oh really? Like, there's like a an episode of Family Guy where Meg and Chris fight these kids in this um in the cafeteria, which basically rips off the whole Kingsman fight. Where like the whole time they're doing it like Free Free Bird, which I think is one of the greatest songs ever. But Free Bird, <laughs> yeah, that's great. Uh, then we get Yandu, Craglin, and Groot with their 700 jumps, funny faces. <laughs> uh, <laughs> all like the. They had to do 700 jumps all at once. Yep. And their faces are all goofy. But while they're jumping, the action's still happening on the planet. Yeah. We're on ego. Yes. That's right. Then Gamora and Peter dance. Then they argue. And she senses something. Mm -hmm. uh, don't tell anybody I did this. You know, kind of thing. Nebula arrives at Ego's planet and tries to kill Gamora. The two of them keep changing their minds between killing each other and saving each other. Uh, which is kind of a funny, fun little, you know, kind of bit between them. Um, uh, but yeah, like they're one second they're saving each other, one second they're killing each other. I mean, Ego, siblings. Yeah. That's siblings, yeah. Ego Kill. explains to Peter, what? Uh, it's up? like, but then like that conflict, at the end of that conflict, they finally get to the point of their animosity. and everything. They finally start talking, yeah. 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 Out a little bit, which, yeah. Communication does wonders. Yep. Yeah. Ego explains to Peter they are the sailor. We're both the sailor in the Brandy song. Brandy, like the what a good wife you would be. And they talk about those lyrics, but it's yeah. so crazy. They talk about that whole song in depth. And that song always reminds me of uh, when I was 16, I had a job at Murray's Auto Parts, and that was on the music. <laughs> that song was on the music like every 15 I songs. I love working song. retail and hearing Muzak's. Oh gosh. I knew that and song. I, I knew every word of that song. I just closed. Oh. You're gonna sing the whole thing. Uh and then Mantis wakes Drax. Uh and it's like warning him, wants to talk to him. Gamora and Nebula discover a cavern. Wait, you're brushing over the fact that when she wakes him, you, this is the funniest part to me. He thinks she's remember. coming on to him. Oh, that's right. And he's like, I already told you you're ugly. Like and then he's yeah. like, Ugh. And she's yeah. like, what are you doing? He was like, I was picturing it in my head. Yeah. <laughs> While he's regurgitating. And she said, I don't even like you like that. Yes. Yeah. That was a funny bit. That was funny yes. too, yeah. Gamora and Nebula discover a cavern filled with skeletal remains. And Yandu gives the your me speech to Rocket after Groot, mm -hmm. Groot barfs. Uh, <laughs> after uh, Groot barf. I can't remember. I know Groot barfs. Because they just done all the jumps and uh, oh, that's right, the jumps were yeah, they're doing the jumps. That's right. And then it's like I here's but but just think about like that scene where Yondu is sitting there, uh, drilling down on all of Rocket's emotional barriers, all his defenses, everything he does. Yeah, mm -hmm. and like it's real like emotional 
scene where they're just drilling down to each other's flaws that they all know each other and it's a fucking blue guy with a red mohawk and a talking raccoon right yep. yeah that's what's great about the guardians of the galaxy movies that's what's because... great but it's also probably what keeps it from ever winning anything like they can't win an oscar if you're a blue guy with a mohawk talking to a talking raccoon it could i mean it <laughs> didn't it, but it could it could it's an anthropo- anthro god damn it forget it anthropomorphic <laughs> yeah my you don't remember that year where the um the the girl was in love with the dude from the sewer and it kept winning all the goddamn awards. The shape oh, of things, yeah. yeah. No, 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 shape not of the shape water. Of things. Shape, shape of water. Water. Shape of water. water. Yeah. So, shape of things is an entirely different movie where uh, Rachel Wise completely emasculates uh, Paul Rudd in the oh, you're most right. brutal way possible. No, it's the shape of water. But yeah. so never say never about a blue guy because that yeah. movie was everywhere like like the more that sci-fi fantasy genre stuff dominates everything that gets released the more likely we'll eventually have a superhero movie that everyone goes holy shit that was a really great one yeah it might it might and have to be when someone makes a really good superman movie or like then like also the probably not, Aragons, not, icons. not kind of push it as a superhero movie like Trying to try to get away from like it'll be hard to get away from it, but not sit there like yeah, well you know I don't think you have to all the way get away from it. Like we said, the Dark Knight did well; it got recognized as a good film with good actors. And I think if you could do uh, more rather than you know, I think Phase Four tried to do a lot of like more standalone stuff rather than specifically pushing the next project. Yeah, but. more the more standalone a story is the more uh more likely i think it will be to win something like if if they did a really good adaptation of uh, i think it's grant morrison's all-star superman which is like it which completely embraces everything that's ever been like over the top and crazy about superman but it's basically like the story is this is superman's last day he's he's something's he's got some kind of poison or something he's going to die this is how much stuff he does in a day. This is all, like all the shit. Maybe Sean Gunn's good. brother do this. That could be. Like I could see James James Gunn, the director of this, is now the head of you know mm-hmm. DC movie creative. No relation to Billy Gunn from the no. Scissor me, daddy ass. <laughs> Mr. Ass. <laughs> all right. I, I would like that quote to be in the opening. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but uh yeah, I like there are some really good. Or, or there's some really solid, you know, like single issue stories in comics yeah. that would, I think would, if you could make a movie based on that without the trappings of having to well, I mean, tie they, into they, something. They, and they do they that do. sometimes. But, yeah, they do but, that sometimes. Yeah. A lot of people looking... watch movie, they're like, oh, I didn't realize this was a comic book movie or this is a movie yeah, based on, right. or, or this show was based on the comics because it's like, it doesn't have men in types, so to speak. But and I think what Andy's saying is right though. Like the power of a standalone, you have time to deep dive into some things. And like I'm looking at the Dark Knight on top of Heath Ledger, it had cinematography nomination, it had best director nominations. Like if someone steps in and builds a film in this world heavy, and it can go places. Yeah. Heavy or yeah, over the top. A... Right. Well, Mantis. Ego's naive mm-hmm. empath servant grows close to Drax and warns him of Ego's plan. And Gamora and Nebula also learn the plan as Rocket, Yondu, Groot, and Kraglin arrive uh, in an old piece of construction that Yondu once used to rob the Bank of Ascavaria. Uh, I love that they brought up the Ascavarians again. Oh, yeah. I forgot about the Ascavarians. I forgot. Well, I once used that Man. to rob the Bank of Ascavaria. And it was like... Uh, Man Star- who was laying with an Ascovarian. Yeah, well, Star Lord had time. picked up an Ascovarian chick. Yeah, I looked them up. I googled the Ascovarians at one point. It was like they're they look like uh, squids or something. You know, they <laughs> they have like a bunch of tentacles on their face and stuff. Uh, Ego <laughs> reveals to Quill that should never be sung in that voice. Wait, what, what did he say? <laughs> he tied that show tentacle porn. <laughs> no. Uh, Ego reveals to Quill that in his travels, he planted seedlings on thousands of worlds that can terraform into new extensions of himself, but only the power of two celestials can activate them. To that end, he impregnated countless women and hired Yandu to collect some of the children, but killed them all when they failed to access the celestial power. At first, dad under- of the year. Yeah, dad, a great, what a great father. And he was just playing ball with them. 
At first, under Ego's influence, Quill fights back when Ego reveals that he gave Meredith the brain tumor that killed her due to the distraction she po- distraction she posed. Isn't that crazy? My whole heart broke. Oh, that see, this was an moment. emotional moment, right? And Chris no, Pratt I, I will was say a good actor. This, yeah. Listen, I'm I may or may not have cried at this movie. Yeah. Um, but come on, like that's heartbreaking because all you've had is your mom. Yeah. And you were lied to by this guy saying, I loved your mom. She was like the love of my life. JK, my poisoned her with the virus. Yeah, like I gave her cancer. Like the one, yeah. the worst thing in your whole life is that your mom died. Because she was distracting me I from my yeah. therapist. Yeah, right. right. But yeah, like as much as he's capable of love is like, it, it, it doesn't, he goes awful. But like, yes, I, I, what I like is that he did that. Like in, like he said, if I knew if I visited a fourth time, I'd never leave. I'd give up my whole meaning thing and just to be with her. But he couldn't see that as meaning. He had to have this higher celestial spread thing, and that's yeah. Like like later, Quill's like you know, families worth meaning. Uh, all this stuff that you're telling me, I need to throw away to embrace your higher meaning that is the meaning right that's and so he that was his thing he loved meredith but he also couldn't uh, give up his he, mission he, he couldn't get over his own ego his ego had to be sated yep because and his ego was so huge because he's a fucking celestial and yes yeah. you could be we are gods yeah but just, be just like everyone else what's wrong with that that's the, the yep. kicker at the end of this big old fight and it's 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 interesting it's a beautiful moment because it says something about humanity right Mm -hmm. and all of its blue man raccoon talking (laughs) celestial beings in this it's a conversation about humanity and how we treat others and what is important even the stuff with the other ravengers previous we don't talk about them but you know um yondu has a past with other ravengers and a lot of that he's at conflict with them right oh yeah um, like yeah that's the whole thing it, is yeah. with the stallone with stakar yondu is kind of kind of kind of got a father this is all about family in every yep. little form and betraying yeah. family you, the family systems mm-hmm. yeah and the family you choose over the family that yep. well, you know you have that one thing have. where he yeah where gamora yells at him and he says well like you know this he's my family and all this, he's like, "Well, I thought you already had a family, kind of thing." Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. It, I finally found my family. I thought you already had. Yeah. Right. It's uh, yeah. This is what this is all about. So it makes me very curious how what Guardian Three is is going to tackle. To be interesting. The destruction of family, maybe. Well, a lot the of this solution of family. This part was hard for me to understand. I mean. Uh, a lot of it, I just yeah, it's not explosions and whatever. <laughs> so, but so, and I'm reading this Joe description. Hayes exposition. You heard are you here. saying you are not in touch with your emotions enough to handle the emotional part of the movie? Maybe. We'll but, get you there. But this part time. that I'm reading in this description, that I stole off of Wikipedia. Uh, I want to talk about because maybe you guys got this and I missed it. But it, it, basically, it says that. Ego reveals he gave Meredith a brain tumor that killed her due to the distraction she posed, forcing Ego to parasitically draw Quill's energy to activate the seedlings, which begin to consume every world. So his seedlings of his ego life are in all these planets. Remember, he said he planted bits everywhere but, and he yeah. said like one then like one celestial isn't quills. enough but two celestials right. that's he, why he that's his goal the whole reason he was seeding he wanted himself, to suck he, find he wanted, somebody else yes. that could do it and then suck their energy he out that's why that he was killing his other kids yeah, because he yeah. had been trying to grab he'd been first he'd been populating the world right um in an effort to make a second celestial all those kids he murdered did not turn out basically he was create if it's almost like he's creating homunculus and like some of them are actually like they weren't viable where quill would quill was highly viable and that's like the, when quill forms the little energy ball for the first time you see ego go yes because right. he's but he's excited. so excited because it's the first one in millions of tries that has actually been able to have right, the but, celestial power but i guess my question is at this point is he saying he was lying about wanting 
them to rule no, together. He, he, now he, he wants, wants them to work together, Quill's. but since Quill is now resisting and won't refuse to do it, it's like, it. I'm going to do it anyway. Now you're going to be a bad yeah. power. Okay, because yeah. he's because he's upset about that. And he's not. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. He he would love. But now to do he it has to his, just yeah. try to suck Quill's all power to himself. Yes. Okay. They would do it together, except you killed his mom. So he can fulfill this meaning he's decided on, and feels like is immutable that he can't change his mind about. And I love the whole battle between them and the effects of all that and when he finally like melts in the sand it's like so creepy but cool mm-hmm. uh and then they're, the, the reunite yeah you really think- yeah Ugh. it's very creepy and cool but it's and you know a lot of times his all of his energy f- falls off and he has to reform into a skeleton again and it's all like really cool effects that we didn't have in the 80s uh, well, they're trying to put him off for a while. So before he is forming or really figures them out, remember Mantis is warning them when he's close and Mantis is the one who gives them the key to how to destroy him, which is where you need baby Groot to fulfill a mission where we're yeah. not so sure that baby Groot has a clear yeah. understanding. Blow up his center uh, floor or whatever. Yeah. And nobody which has red tape. button. <laughs> yes. He's like, which one? Says, no. Yeah, I'm, which yeah. one? I am good. I don't doesn't know which one. That's, that's very cutesy too, right? It's like she's like, yeah. you like, I just want to hug baby Groot, right? Yeah. <laughs> you do. <laughs> well, and I'm sure they sold tons of little baby Groot oh, yeah. stuffed they, animals and toys. Of course. And... Baby Groot is what hooked my wife into the MCU, I think. I <laughs> mean, it happened to a lot of people coming, a lot of people who never watched Star Wars. Yeah. Broken because of uh right. Pop quiz, pop quiz. Baby Groot. Grogu. Grogu? Grogu. Baby Baby Yoda. Yeah. Are you saying who's the cutest? Who's the cutest? Yeesh, that's hard. If you had to choose, who would you choose? I'm not choosing. (laughs) I I, 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 mm, Baby Yoda. I think I go Baby Groot. I gotta go Baby Groot. I'd go baby Yoda, but I don't want to choose. So <laughs> as if you put a gun to my head. They're both cute. And we can have like a Muppets nursery. Remember that when we had the Muppets Muppet nursery babies, TV yeah. show? Yeah. We can have that. a series where we have baby Yoda and baby Groot and they go on cross cross Right. We're com- and, see, we're coming Star- up with all these Star- programs. Star Wars is a Marvel property now. Pro- oh, it is. True. So we could cross franchise. <laughs> we need to. Yes. Life with Baby Groot and Baby Yoda, like on their own little miniature adventures. They okay. could do uh, a few, uh, like a little short mini series of Baby Groot shorts are on. Disney yeah, Plus yeah. As Those well. are kind of funny. That's yeah. pretty awesome. Yeah. yeah. Well, the reunited guardians do travel to Ego's brain at the planet's core, during which Yandu reveals that he kept Quill to spare him from the fate of Ego's other progeny. And he was like, I knew he was killing them all, and I kept you alive. As they come under attack from the Sovereign's drones, uh, at this point, Wham Bam Shang Lang plays. Uh, wham Bam Shang Lang. I love that that becomes the theme music of the Sovereign. Uh, <laughs> Mantis, because every time they come back, that song comes back on. It's kind of a cool, another great use of music. This cool music. Uh, Mantis puts Ego to sleep while they make a plan. You know, I don't know if you can do it. I don't believe in you. I didn't believe you could do it. You know, I believe you can do it. I didn't believe she really could. That whole <laughs> thing with tracks. Yeah. Uh, Rocket makes a bomb using the stolen batteries, which Groot is going to plant. And the train. Here comes the training bit and the tape bit. Anybody have any tape? I love this. <laughs> Hey, do you have any, <laughs> hey, come on. Do you have any tape? <laughs> would Scott's tape yeah, work? Scott's yeah, Scott's tape would work. <laughs> I don't have yeah. any. Then why did you ask if Scott's tape would work if we don't have any? Like that whole f- bit is just the mundane ridiculousness of people. is just like that Scott's tape bit is just great. Like that's. Because you're like in the heat of battle. Yeah. yeah. In the, the heat of tape. battle. Here comes this bit. Yeah. Do you have any tape? It's like a Seinfeld episode in the middle of a Marvel movie. I mean, yes. they do that a, like the, the, the Guardians do that a lot. Like they yeah. do. I'm thinking like in Infinity War, we see some like this banter back and forth. Yeah, that's what they do well. They're the, some they're sort the of friend group. Yeah. Uh-huh. yeah. Like I, I, I wonder who came up with those. Like who wrote those? Like somebody funny wrote. James Gunn co-wrote. Uh, I don't know if you've I think he either wrote or co-wrote the script. My wife did yeah. say those gun brothers are funny. I mean, that's why she hung out with them. They were funny. Yeah. Uh, uh, okay. Like Colt yeah. and um, what's the name? Gun. 
Colton Austin gun. I didn't like them. Bart and Billy what, gun. What guns are better? Bart and Billy, Sean and John. I mean, Sean and James, Colt and or Austin and, and Austin. Well, we need TV to to watch all of the Royal Rumbles to really weigh <laughs> in on it. Uh, all right. Nebula saves the day by giving the ship enough power to destroy the Goldie people's ships. Uh, she, you know, she <laughs> Goldie sacrifices the Goldie people. Mm-hmm. Uh, and she does, you know, she like sacrifices kind of her body for the, for the good of the cause, which kind of makes she sense. makes use of the robot. Like, this is going to hurt. She makes use of, of her robot parts and her immense tolerance for pain. Yes. yes. Yeah. It's like, don't threaten me with a good time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> kind of saves you the day. first. That's a Donnie ba- Donnie Bale says that all the time. I love it. Uh, okay, uh, and then then it comes one of my favorite lines of the whole movie <laughs> is "I'm Mary Poppins, y'all. Ha <laughs> ha! You look like Mary Poppins. Is it cool? Yeah, yes, he's really cool. I'm Mary. But Poppins, I love that y'all. moment. It's so sweet because <laughs> he he does he wants after realizing what was done for him. And I think we as an audience figured it out pretty early on when we figured out what Eagle was. That Yago yeah, um, was good. Yeah, yeah, that he didn't keep him because he needed a miniature scavenger. But I think it was it's really cute that he said it as a throwaway joke, but really after thinking about it for a second, because Mary Poppins is a caretaker who comes in and changes kids' lives, right? There you go. Like, yeah, yes. You Where it's so, it's cute Ew. because it's also a very soft moment. Yeah, so he starts it off like making fun of, ha ha, you look like Mary yep. Poppins. Is he cool? <laughs> and you're right. That pause there where he's like, yeah, he's cool. Yeah. That was <laughs> Mary, that, yeah. And then when he comes down, Mary Poppins, y'all. <laughs> it's just like, uh, that's why it's great. It's just so yeah. fucking great. And you can't uh, I, like. And I, that's Michael Rooker, ladies and gentlemen. The guy who plays Yandu, Michael Rooker. Yeah, he's great. <laughs> Mary Poppins, y'all. Just <laughs> yeah. The like, way also, he sells girl's that. Brother Sweet, funny Walking moment. Dead. What'd you say? Girl's brother from Walking Dead. Oh. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, that's right. He was on that show. I never saw. I've never Dead. watched Walking Dead. I didn't either. Yeah, TBJ is cool for not watching Two Walking Dead. We bond yeah. over. I tried to. Series, just, no, it's just I. Uh, you know what? I a zombie apocalypse might happen. I don't want to um, be down and and have bummer days watching it on TV and then having to live through it because yeah. we live in a trash or universe. Walking Dead, the <laughs> zombie apocalypse is, ba- is more a sort of backstory. It's the survival of the people. Yes, but my point is like watching that survival and then having to the only this thing, trash world. Here's, here's the thing, though. Here, there's there's <laughs> there are depths in The Walking Dead that would make that would really tug at your heartstrings. I especially know, especially because there are like such a small amount of characters that you kind of fall in love with. I mean, they I they, they diverge from it. the comic a lot, but it's still just like when you see like Glenn get killed. Spoiler. And Walking Dead, it's like you you was with them for like five or six seasons, and it's yeah. like, what the fuck? How could you do this to him? Um, you know? after and they got brutally, and knowing what we are like when we have things like a coronavirus, I don't want to watch people surviving because it is heartbreaking to watch what could actually happen if we don't get our shit together, and we right. aren't doing so well as humans. In right. America. So you know that's why I watch all the fluff on the Hallmark Channel because it makes <laughs> me feel good. Clears this your brain. Serotonin yeah. Clears your keeps mind. Keeps me yep. from being a depressed huddle under some blankets because <laughs> this world. Yep. Yeah. My escape is New Heart, the New Heart show right now. I've been watching that. Bob Newhart. Yeah. Uh, just at night sometimes. Yeah. I've that. been uh, watching James Garner shows. Either uh, Rockford Files or Maverick. I've been watching Yellowstone. I've been getting a lot is of. Is it weird... good? Is Yellowstone good? Is it violent? I... It's not. Is it? It's Wild West, right? Is it Old West? No, stuff? It's, 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 it's not, not Old wild West. West. Oh, it's well, like modern day they, Montana they, or they, something. Yeah, they have what eighteen eighty. Oh. They have eighteen eighty three, which is a sequel, and then they just came out with nineteen twenty three with Harrison Ford. Which is a sequel, but is it's there movies Kevin or TV no, shows? T- TV show. Oh, but it's like Yellow- Kevin Costner, Taylor oh, Sheridan. God, fuck Kevin Costner. <laughs> Sorry, I can't do no Kevin Costner. All right, cool moment. There's a cool moment of posing. This cool like action movie moment, comic book thing where they're all just kind of 
the heroes after the Mary Poppins moment, and then Mantis, look out! <laughs> and uh, but he says that after she gets knocked out, oh Mantis, look out! Uh, and then we have the "Ow, my nipples" moment as they send Drax with Mantis up top. Oh my nipples! <laughs> Nebula saves Gamora and then says, "Get over it." You know that whole thing, that whole funny moment there. Then everybody seems about to die. Drax and Mantis are in quicksand. Yondu's buried in rocks. Rockets smothered in ego. Uh, Gamora and Nebula also are. And Groot's buried. Uh, and then at the last second, before getting buried, Yondu says, "I use my heart to control the arrow, not my head." Or yep, you know. And uh, that kind of oh oh, he realizes uh, at that moment. Uh, and that's what he needed. Yep. Yeah. Star Lord, the power to kind of win the day when we just when we think all is lost. That's how we know it's going to turn around. And we have the you shouldn't have killed my mom and smash my Walkman. Uh, <laughs> and then I think all I just made a side note. All Generation Xers get excited when they see the Walkman, I think, with the orange, you know, with the, with the little orange one. buff, because we all had oh, that. Yeah, Everybody oh, had. Yeah. Like I, I remember Andy and I's older brother Beef had the one with the orange. Like he had that same one with the orange ones, and I was always jealous. I wanted that one. I only had the the little black ones. You know the Sony. <laughs> you know, there's all these different brands or whatever. He always had better ones. It seemed like, but he was a teenager at the time. And we weren't yet. Anyway. Yeah. But uh, I feel like just like just seeing those Walkmans, I'm so nostalgic and just pine for those days where I have to rewind. <laughs> A tape on my right. belt it over. as I walk out. Like, I yeah. can't leave the house. Like, I'm going to my dad's for the weekend. I'm not leaving the house until I get my Walkman clipped on my belt and my <laughs> headphones on. And I have enough tapes for the walk, you know, like yep. for the walk there, the walk back while I'm there that weekend, you know, like. Uh, and the fact that you don't always have, I was talking to someone about this the other day about cassette tapes. And it was one of my teen nieces. And I was like, not only are you functioning off cassette tapes, but sometimes you would buy just singles. So one side yeah. is yeah. one song. And you got the beat side. You a remix yeah. of the other side or the maxi song, singles. But that's it. You're just yeah. flipping between those two. Yeah. And sometimes you have a whole CD, but you know, your moods vary. Who knows what you're going to put in there? Well, and I just remembered several times of that. And doing then you that. got, you got like, like Raekwon and Chef, the purple tape. Everybody in the hip hop community <laughs> love having the purple tape. Raekwon the Chef. Um, <laughs> I was gonna say back then I felt like there was like this need to learn all those songs. Uh, I can't learn all the words unless I listen to this song fifty five hundred. Oh yeah, times. you rewind it. You yeah, you, you rewind, rewind, play it again, you play it again. Yeah, wait, I and, missed the part. I missed the part. And with the single, the cool thing with the single, if it had a different version on the back, you just flip it over, listen to that, flip it back over, and then yep. flip it back over. I'm gonna get the words down. I I remember writing down the word, like trying to write down the words and because you were them. cool if you knew them. Yeah, if you do, yeah, you're the coolest kids knew all the goddamn words. Uh, okay, Quill fights Ego with his newfound celestial powers uh, to distract him long enough for the other Guardians and Mantis to escape. Uh, Groot plants on the brain. He plants the bomb on the brain. The bomb explodes, killing Ego and dis- disintegrating the planet. Quill loses his celestial powers soon after Ego's death. Uh, Yandu sacrifices himself to save Quill and dies in the vacuum of space. Another heart wrenching moment. Uh, well, before we get there, we know the sacrifice is coming because Rocket says to Yandu, I have this and this. I only have one of each. Right. And Yandu says, Give it to me and I'll do it. And he, Rocket, that. knows what he's going to do. Yeah. And it's like, No, nah, dog. And then uh, Yandu's like, Let me do one thing right. Mm. Yep. And that right there, that's that, a moment. Yeah. I started to tear up right there. Yeah. Let me do one thing right. I was like, <laughs> and then when Chris Pratt, you know, realizes what he's doing for him, mm-hmm. like the emotion in his voice, like, again, a great, a good actor, you know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And there's these moments that are, you know, it's like and, basically, and you know, he, he's losing his quote unquote father figure. His, his real yeah. father. Yeah. I and mean, he's also, been his only father figure yep. his, since his mom died. He's a blue guy. And we're getting emotional about a blue guy. And, and there's the, also the bit where Gamora's like, we're not leaving without Quill. And she's about to go load up yes. and go back in for him. And Rocket right. knocks her out. Yeah. yeah. Because he can only stand to lose one he friend. He says, I'm only losing one Yeah, friend that moment, too. I can yep. only lose one friend. Yeah, that's that was another emotional moment. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, Yandu sacrifices and saves Quill. Like in space. 
uh welcome to the and then we hit the line welcome to the freaking guardians of the galaxy only he didn't use freaking uh, <laughs> like group to the we got to talk about your language you know <laughs> hey, hey, whoa whoa uh, but I love during that big battle, Quill turns into Pac Man for a second like, yeah. when he's fighting him. Like well, that's what he's saying when he gets the powers in the first place. Oh, yeah. like, I'm gonna yes. build some weird shit. I'm gonna yeah, build some he weird does shit. say. Pac- yeah. Well, yeah, he's a Pac Man and some and other Heather Locklear. Heather Locklear. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's so funny. Uh, anyway, having reconciled with Gamora, Nebula still chooses to leave and resume her quest to kill Thanos by herself. The Guardians hold the funeral for Yondu which Kraglin and dozens of Ravager ships attend, acknowledging Yondu's sacrifice and accepting him as a Ravager again. We know he did have the lights. You know, he said, you'll never have the lights. You'll never have the the real funeral. And he had it. And I know. And I excited. cried. That's I'm not another. ashamed to say I yeah. cried. Yeah. another Full sweet on one. in the middle of my day on my couch mid Christmas movies. <laughs> Pause for Guardians. And I'm yeah. full on crying at this point see it's an emotional movie right yeah you were just saying i never said it wasn't (laughs) you're also saying guardians are not your favorite you don't even like it's not my favorite but this movie did a very good job yeah this movie did a very good job of all the things i like but there are things i like this this just never been my favorite franchise i like the banter i like the friendships that's Mm -hmm. but there's so many franchises to choose from it's just never been my favorite yeah, there is a lot. That's a good problem to have. But yeah, yeah. so uh, Sylvester Sloan had said the colors of Ogord will never flash over your grave and you'll never hear the horns of freedom. And so he got both of those things. The colors of Ogord. Uh, and, uh, it's, and the character Stallone is, is Stakar Ogord in the comics. That's his name. Okay. Uh, AKA Starhawk. Starhawk, yeah. But uh, they don't. And are we going to have a Starhawk movie? Do we know? Or I think the, uh, this group uh of you know the let's steal some shit the the new stone group i think they're they sh- will show up in guardians 3 i don't know if that okay. means they're gonna hand the it franchise over like to them were. or yeah. what but they can't just leave that uh as nothing i mean it, sylvester it's, stallone is no spring chicken he is not uh but he's also stallone yeah, I'm about to say, also he's not, to do a lot of... and his acting skills are questionable but then but... he doesn't also have to do a lot of act like even even um, Michael Rooker, that like Yondu didn't do a lot of. That's not a lot of action. You know what I mean? So it's not like like he can be in the movie, but he's not like they're like ravages. They're, they're not. They're mostly gun heavy. You know, sure you may have someone who may fight, but they're not yeah. getting out doing cartwheels. Yeah, they're trying to flipping. steal shit. All they're yeah. doing is trying yeah. to boost shit. So, yeah. so all you gotta do shit. is sit in the chair. You know. So, but I mean, if we can get. A gr- like I would take just one movie it could be a standalone it doesn't have to be a trilogy considering Stallone's age but if we can get Stallone and Michelle Yeoh and Ving Rhames Ving Ra- yes fucking Ving, Ving Rhames and oh, yeah. uh, Michael Rosenbaum is Martin X yeah can. those are yeah those are great and and uh, that little mainframe face is fucking Miley Cyrus's voice oh, yeah. uh, I don't know if they'll get her back for something but that's that's a group I would like to see yep. their adventures as well. That'd be a great movie or show. And, and they're based on the original version of the Guardians of the Galaxy. From the yeah, Guardians. I want more of this kind of weird shit. Yeah. Uh, during the funeral, Gamora admits she loves Peter and they become a couple, according to this Wikipedia thing. Uh-huh. You know, they kind of put their arms around each other. And then in a series of mid and post credit scenes, Kraglin takes up Yondu's telekinetic arrow and control fin and, you know, hits drax with it <laughs> like, ah! uh ravager leader stakar ogord reunites with his ex-teammates that we we're just talking about aisha creates a new artificial being with whom she plans to destroy the guardians naming him adam mm-hmm. and i think we alluded to that in the last episode adam uh adam Will- warlock you yeah, that that's is, he's that's, gonna be in three. Yeah, we've seen a clip of him in the trailer for Guardians Three. Okay, and um, it's uh, it'll be interesting to see what they do with him. And he's yep. played played by uh, uh, some guy whose face I don't like. Not the guy who played. Uh, <laughs> not the guy who played Miles in uh, Frasier. No, uh, he's pl- he's uh, <laughs> the guy who who played the kid in that We're the Millers movie. And he's also yeah. in Detroit as a racist cop. In, in what? Detroit. Oh. Oh, he does play racist cop. You're right. 
Yeah, What's he's... Detroit? Is that it's a, a show? TV show? Movie? Oh, TV it's a movie. Show. show. Movie? It's a, oh, mo- a movie. Show. <clears throat> movie. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Yeah. It was a movie. I thought it was a show, but you're right. Oh. oh. Art oh. stars right, and TBJ Whoa. admitted it. Uh, 2017 film. Whoa. Directed by Catherine Whoa. Bigelow. Whoa. Uh, director of uh, The Hurt Locker. <laughs> Will, Will Poulter is the guy's name. Yep. I like how we okay. never knew him, but we were just naming movies. <laughs> we're like that that kid. Anthony Mackie and John Boyega. Uh, I know who those and- two are. Those guys are in it as well. Falcon yep. and the uh, Stormtrooper. Guy. It's a pretty good and, yeah. movie. It's just you and, know, one yeah. of those things I've hired to watch. It's called Detroit? Yeah, Detroit. Yep. Mm-hmm. Jeez, I've never heard of it. I've never heard of anything. Okay, Groot has grown into a teenager at, in the post Oh, I scene. love that scene. And a, and a group of uninterested watchers abandon their informant who was discussing his experiences on Earth. Who was Stanley. Uh, Stanley. Stanley. <laughs> uh, yeah, hey, fellas, yeah. fellas, I got so many more stories to tell. Yeah, oh, Stanley, Stanley, <laughs> was that just? A but, but that sort of uh, that sequence because he was he, they, we see him briefly earlier where he's talking. About, yep. This time I was uh, a FedEx guy, sort of like this is Stanley tying all his cameos oh. into being the yep. same character. Sort I didn't of. catch that. He was the FedEx guy yep. at the end of Civil War who said, right. uh, "Are, are oh, yeah. you Tony Stank?" Stank, yeah, right, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> And, I didn't uh, yeah, we catch them when yeah. they're doing all the their planet jumping. We we catch it first. So I mean, there's there's probably nothing to be made of that other than just a cute little thing of Stanley being more yeah. important than just his silly cameos. But the Groot teenager bit was funny. Uh, yeah, I'm Groot. Because I mean, even in even in the holiday special, spoiler alert for TPJ, Groot's even you older than that. It? He's like a Got young. It. It's like a group that it's like a teenage group that has filled out. Yeah. Well, no, and this, and this, gone well, this out for one, the wrestling team. I, I wouldn't say hey, <laughs> he's he's a college age group in the holiday special. So he's probably so he's not super tall yet, but he's he's big. probably mid twenties. I mean, early. Tw- well, I guess he's still a teen, like teen. You be eighteen, 21. nineteen, yeah. twenty. Yeah. He's, yeah. he's a he's a swole group. Anyway, I think the holiday special was good. I think mm-hmm. it was good. So. I'll watch it. We can talk about it next week. Yeah, see what you think. It, it's, all right. Yeah. Well, I'm still catching up on all my Christmas movies that I missed. Yeah, we got Guardians 3 coming out, which promises to be a real... Uh, yeah, so adventure. Guardians 3 is the, is the one that comes out after Quantumania, right? Uh, yeah. 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 It comes out May, right? This May, and that's yeah, the, May. that's the other thing I, I wanted to tie in to our earlier talk about. You know, how Phase Four has kind of been scattered a bit, but the what I've heard about Ant Man and uh, the Wasp colon Quantumania is that the previous two Ant Man movies have come after like big Avengers movies mm-hmm. and have been sort of like palate cleansers. Like it was the end of uh, the Phase Two, was it the first Ant Man? We haven't done. Have we done the second Ant Man yet? Or is that part no. of phase four? Well, this uh, is this remember. is well, this be, because this is the beginning, right? No, I don't think so. So it's like, but this is like, it, have we? The director has said, I want this Ant Man uh, three to be the big Avengers movie rather than having to just be like the little the comedy lizard. thing that cleans well, it because, out. Because you're introduced to the big bad. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's the, it's like how, you know, the Avengers, you know, they was teasing Thanos. Where right. this we actually there's no teasing. It's like, hey, Jonathan Majors here. We Fuck got Kang. Me. We got goddamn Kang the Conqueror in full Kang the Conqueror form. I mean, we, we, he was in Loki. Yeah, but he was he was a version. He, he was a version of him. But this is the what the version in Loki was warning it's, against. Like I'm kind of curious as to will we see other variants in this? And you there's know? also, uh. A lot of talk about Modok being yeah. in Ant Man and the Wasp Quantumania, but maybe in some. And Andy see- has a boingy boinger for Modok. <laughs> I do. I got a big Modok t shirt. I'm, uh, <laughs> I feel solidarity with characters with giant weird heads. Well, so, we all, everybody called you Modok. And well, that's true. I called you Modok in school, like growing up. Yeah. But can, do you guys think I could see? I could go watch uh, uh, Guardians of the Galaxy three when it comes out without going through everything and catching up. Like just going to see it or is it well, good? Good. Uh, we, we might be in a good spot because remember we watched most of Phase Four. We TV. haven't. We haven't. Infinity War 
And I mean, we got to get through that, but it's coming out in May. Thing, it's a big January. development for the Guardians. Oh, it is. Yeah. So I need to. We, we've got well, a few months. It's not coming out till May, right? Yeah, we got time. Yeah, I mean, we're only in January, January, so. Like, 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 look how got, long if we can get together cool. enough. <laughs> if we can get through the next uh, Phase Three film, Spider-Man: Homecoming. Yeah. Then Thor: Ragnarok and Black Panther. Then we get to Infinity War. Yeah. And that's uh, and then of course Endgame. Oh got, shit. And Man and the Wasp. We haven't done that yet. Yeah. 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 So I we thought Ragnarok we, we, was next. It's possible. We might That's not why be you far watch off. Ragnarok. Yeah, I thought Ragnarok was next, and I was I watching this week, so I missed Spider Man Homecoming. So I'll have to go back and watch that. I mean, we could, we could <laughs> do Thor Ragnarok next but, and just jump back to Homecoming. Well, right. No, no, did you, like, did you like Ragnarok? Yeah, I did, but I didn't like Ragnarok. Is another treatment. one that comes on a whole hell of a lot. It does. It does come on TV. I will say my hopes were way up because everybody talks about how great it is. So. I think it was a little less than I expected because everybody's like, oh, Ragnarok's the best one. It was good, but I don't know. I don't like uh, I think it's com- 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 with short hair. Comparable to the other one, the other four, other three. Yeah, yeah, yeah better definitely one. better than the other Thors. I loved him and Hulk. That whole thing was great. Yeah, that's funny. what most people love about it. It's <laughs> yeah. like a buddy comedy. Yeah, I love plus, plus Jeff Goldblum. And yeah. you got, I will say, yeah, Jeff Goldblum. Are you from funny. Asgard? And I love the, the Valkyrie. Uh, yeah, uh, she's pretty good. She's awesome. I don't know who that is, but Tessa Thompson. Who's that? What's her name? Tessa Thompson. I, I love her. I love her. <laughs> like she's awesome. Uh, so yeah. Uh, and yeah, does she come back? And well, we don't have to talk about that. Yeah. Now. Yeah. Okay, she's later. Okay. Anyway, uh, yeah, she's cool, and that was good. But we're not talking about that. We're talking about Guardians of the Galaxy three, and I would say or two. I loved it. I give it 80, 80 stars. It's the best <laughs> Marvel movie of all time. Uh, it's it's pretty damn good. I love I give it. it eight and a half boinky boinkers out of ten. We have no <laughs> legitimate rating scale. <laughs> all right. Art gives them boners. Andy you, gives them. Did you just say eight and a half boinky eight boingers? And half. Eight and a half boinky boingers. Eight and a half. A, a hard nine. <laughs> <laughs> Something is wrong with you guys. I don't know how I associate with him. It gave uh, TBJ man. tears. So she it did give me tears. It's a good movie. So I'll give it a thumbs up. I won't break it. There we go. Yeah, uh, t- two wonderful thumbs up for this movie. I I have a sucker for the Guardians movies because these are based on comics. I was reading rather, rather uh, yeah. avidly when they were. Well, and I it. and I, that's another yeah. thing with the Guardians three is that we see them in the uniforms that the actual <laughs> Guardians, they all have a uniform the now comics, that yeah. were from the comics that I was initially reading uh, back when they were, this, this version of them were kind of forming uh, Dan Abnett and Andy Lanning putting these characters together when they hadn't really had anything to do with each other before. No, I'll say, I, I, I will read their comic. I think I'll read the comics now. They're, I, they're, the, it's a bit different. Star-Lord is not quite that guy yeah yeah i read the first one already but yeah okay all right what were we gonna one say of the, one of the things about these like the guys of the galaxy movies for me is like i love the soundtrack like the soundtrack it does like I like, oh, I, like yeah. a lot of times i watch what you guys may consider bad movies because the soundtrack speaks to me you know like yeah, like, yeah they, the Gun, Barbarella you know, soundtrack speak to you did the <laughs> Did the Barbarella soundtrack speak to you? Nah, nah, that's nah. trash. Well, that wasn't my movie. That was that was Joe. That I was. know it was Joe's movie. I don't well, trust the me. Music it's in that. it's in grain right here. Who picked that damn movie? <laughs> but like Steve like, Bit Gruff from the Gruff and Loud Show made me pick that movie. A lot of yeah, movies, but I mean he didn't tell me to, but he was talking the soundtrack. About. You know, like, said, like I, I'll listen, like, okay, this, this soundtrack's awesome. Let me watch the movie. Well, this is one of those things where like every time it comes on. Like I could be watching, it could be in the middle of the movie. I'll start watching it just because, like, the music is going to make me feel happy. You know, yeah, that's, that's my my happy place. Is, so old is to good music movie director. Soundtrack. Yeah, yeah that, that's Judgment a huge night. thing with uh, like Tarantino movies. I would, uh, yeah, one of the things they do really well is a great soundtrack. There's the bit at the end of Kill Bill Volume One where Uma mm-hmm. Thurman is facing off against Lucy Liu, and like they're just like so doing sword shit, but that's please don't let me be misunderstood yep. uh that version of it is just playing and just making that work the same thing with like the first deadpool movie yeah when uh i knew i was gonna like it 
because I I really loved you know the early the uh, not the Liefeld early but the the Joe <laughs> Kelly Deadpool run that that <laughs> kind of transition Deadpool into being you know like some shit show Spider Man ripoff into the weird unique character he is and that opening scene of just like that freeze frame of this ridiculous action shot being looked at from all angles to mm-hmm. uh, you're my angel in the morning uh the the juice newton or uh i think it is juice it, newton. you're my angel in the morning darling. yeah juice newton, the, yeah that I was like I, I was i had a period of time where i wanted to be the one to write a deadpool trilogy and uh like I made script notes and shit like that. And that's one of the major things that it was going to have to be was going to have a really like a soundtrack that is, yeah. you know, that kind of thing. So Deadpool made it where Guardians of the Galaxy sold all these weird ass concepts by having such a kick ass soundtrack and having a good the, music director the, goes yeah. a long way. I think people Absolutely underestimate yes. the the role that music plays in film, even when it's not a soundtrack, even when you look at just the score of a movie. Mm-hmm music changes everything so shout yeah, out to yeah. whoever is doing marvel soundtracks or music directing in each right. movie because they are doing it especially yeah. the guardians movies in particular yeah. do a great job of it well and before we go we forgot to mention when we're talking about wrestlers and made movies that we all can agree the greatest wrestler to ever make a movie is greg the hammer valentine in 2013 swim uh what you know, there was a movie called swim we can all agree yeah the greg the hammer valentine is the greatest wrestler to ever be in a movie i don't know if we all agree joe but sure. greg the hammer valentine. i want to say it's uh <laughs> rowdy rowdy piper and they live uh where hell comes it? to Frogtown. david arquette he doesn't he, count he, he was an actor first he, he, he was a wcw first, world champion he to has wrestled. and he has done a, was a rock star right he's also done the wrestling is. movie fozzy He's a rock musician that is a wrestling star. Okay, I'm pretty it's sure a he's lot, not a rock star. There's, there's a lot like there's a lot of wrestlers who are rock musicians. Like Brody King has a like a really good band. Uh, uh, the Doctor Style Slick sang his own song. The Doctor Style Slick, baby. Our uh, truth. Our <laughs> truth, the rapper. All right, everybody, thanks I, for I, listening. I, okay, I, Wait, I just review, subscribe, <laughs> okay. tell your friends, everybody. Every list, if every listener tells. Yes, I have to hold on. Five thousand friends. I have to read you. Someone <laughs> did say something to us. Oh, really? Uh, let me go. Hold on. Is there a new review? They were listening to um us, and they were thanking us for a breakdown in a movie. There it is. Ba, 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 ba. She has two things to tell you. First, I had Wonder Woman under rules, and Paul had Superman under rules. That's her husband. Therefore, I'm. I think it was meant to be. So she's just saying her and her husband were meant to be nerds. And <laughs> then she says, "Thanks for the explanation of Ben Riley. Uh, I'm embarrassed because a friend of mine had the last name Spivey. His son, her son, is Ben, and her daughter is Riley. And in the group, someone said." Ben and Riley Spivey, I guess you're Spivey. Senses are tingling and everybody in the room laughed except for me. Now I get it. <laughs> I feel empowered by my nerd school friends. Yay. Awesome. And isn't that the goal? So Absolutely. It go. is the goal. Power nerds. That's great. Thank you. See, what's we're helping person, everybody. What's the poster's yeah. name? Karen. Karen. It's a Karen. Karen. Yes, uh, yes. Karen. Karen was the one where we uh, when we were at Heroes Con. Remember, we met the teenage girls. Ah, okay. Oh, nice. Yeah. Cool. I'm glad we could uh, help. Yeah, that's <laughs> great. And speaking of Spivey senses, the next movie is Spider Man Homecoming. There you go. So we get the, so the we'll MCU's get yeah. first Spider Man movie. I'm excited. Wow. About that. Ready. And we will have it to you very soon, nerd. So please, quick, 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 give us some this stars so on there and fill out a review if you have a chance. Sounds. But tell your friends about the nerd school. Tell them, quack, listen. Quack. Quack. Listen, quack. we're pretty dope. We are pretty dope. We'll end it on that. We're dopey and pretty. Not dopey. <laughs> I'm dopey. <laughs> okay, I'm, not, I'm dope. I'm dopey, sneezy, and doc. They say I can't
rap about the president no more But evidently they don't see we in the streets still poor Still more incarceration of my kids by the prisons And people thinking this election to end it racism Proud of a pessimism, glad to see Obama But don't expect me not to speak out when I still see problems Mr. Officer, now they POTUS look like me You gon' think again when seeing brothers rolling down the street Every Martin Luther King on his American dream Still a Rodney being beaten, screaming fuck the police Me, I'm running through the pasture, trying to get away from master But the dogs is on my ass, I gotta move a little faster Can't pass for Caucasian, but I got a couple papers From the plantation saying I graduated, congratulations Cool beans, but to most school me Trying to dodge STDs, living off government cheese Trust the government, please, not even if it was me Sitting in the Oval Office as Commander-in-Chief Trying to give us us free, but there's a nigga in my ear saying You got it, Superman, you ought to keep it here Get this distinctly clear, I'm all about jetting Raps come to Kente without the half-stepping A new chapter, back with new lessons After that, the final exam, any questions? QueenCityPodcastNetwork.com.